from the LA Superior Court trial of the people of California versus uh, Daystar Peterson, aka Meg the Stallion, and the Tory Lanez trials. Yo, y'all, there's so much going on here. Um, it feels like a TV show if you're fans of uh, SVU. Um, sorry for the close up. Uh, it has been crazy. So the day started off with a uh, one of the jurors being excused, juror 38 was excused, so they put in one of the backup jurors. Um, Tori, I mean, if there's a fashion show and a step and repeat, he definitely needs to be on it. He was wearing a kind of a, like a light brown suit with a black turtleneck. Um, Kelsey came in with a lawyer, so she's lawyered up a separate lawyer from everybody else that we've seen thus far. And as soon as she walks in, the district attorney says that she is asserting her Fifth Amendment right. Um, and everybody in the courtroom, including the, um, the defense attorneys, looked super surprised. Like, what's happening? We have no, um, we have no idea that this is going on. Um, they also asked for Kelsey's team. Also asked for trans transactional immunity as well, meaning that um, they can't come after her if you know if the trial doesn't go in Tory's favor. That the prosecution can't come after Kelsey so she pretty much just good to go as far as if she was facing any jail time she's not gonna face any jail time don't quote me on that I'm not a lawyer so um, like I said the defense attorneys they seemed super shocked they wanted a 10 minute break the judge didn't grant them a 10 minute break then um, everybody the prosecution and the defense attorneys approached the bench they had a conversation and they decided to proceed so the prosecution was asking uh, Kelsey questions, kind of establishing questions as far as, you know, do you want to be here? And she said on multiple, multiple occasions, just throughout the questioning, um, that she doesn't want to be here. She's going through postpartum and somebody had passed away. Um, and she doesn't like, you know, the media attention. She also said that she doesn't like the lies that Megan is saying, which is interesting because she didn't say the lies that Tori is saying. She said the lies Megan is saying. Um, she also said that she doesn't like the fact that she's accused of taking hush money and then being a bad friend. Um, I'm assuming part of that is Megan, but again, she didn't state Megan. Um, she's also tired of the, ac the accusations that kind of the media has kind of put her uh, into um, the prosecution also asked if um, you know she has been accused of shooting Megan um, in the media and she said she's heard that so then they go into establishing her relationship with Megan they say that um, her and Megan met in the freshman year of college um, they met Tori the beginning year of 2020 at the Rock Nation brunch um, she also said that her and Megan were close friends, um, so much so that she became Megan's assistant, and that started back in 2018. Um, so she said she's pretty much a utility player. Um, she helped with whatever the team needed. She was mainly on scheduling, making sure that Megan got to place to place. Um, like I said, they met both Megan and Kelsey met Tori at the Rock Nation brunch. Um, and she said something which I don't know has been in the media at all. She said that um, Megan was trying to hook Tori and Kelsey up together, like I guess dating or you know, whatever. Um, and Kelsey did say that she slept with Tori. Um, she said, she said relations or engagement. She didn't say sleep, she didn't say sex, so that's kind of key. Um, what happened also in 2020, so I guess shortly after the Rock Nation brunch, uh, Kelsey got COVID and she went back to Texas and she was in Texas for about two to three months at the time. Um, so now when Kelsey came back to Los Angeles, because they were renting an Airbnb, so it was Kelsey uh, and Megan and I guess whoever else is on their, on, on their staff, uh, was renting an AB, Airbnb in Los Angeles. So by the time Kelsey comes back from having COVID, she um, is probably the end of June, about two weeks before the incident happens. Um, so Meg, she also mentioned that Megan had convinced her to sublease her apartment. She owned her apartment, and she's all she 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 really said that she owned her she owned or she was renting. But she's pretty much kind of saying like I, this was my money. This wasn't like you know handoff money from Megan. And then Megan convinced her like, hey, like you're you're my assistant. You can just sublease. And she sold all her furniture, and so she came back to LA. Um, and that was the end of June. 
So then at that time they received the invite to Kylie Jenner's house. Also, Kelsey was really poignant in saying that it was not a party, it was a gathering. And it was about five to six people at this gathering. She didn't state if it was five to six people, including herself and Megan, or five to six people in total. But she said that it was Kylie, Megan, um, Kelsey, and EJ at the time when they got to Kelsey, when they got to Kylie's house on July 12th, um, around late afternoon, about three or four o'clock. Um, so they were hanging out in the pool and all that sort of stuff. Apparently, at one point, Megan offered to cook nachos. And so she went off to cook nachos and then she came back outside and they were, being, uh, they were playing beer pong. And Megan said, you all are having fun without me. And then Kelsey really noted Megan's demeanor. She said that a couple times that she felt that Megan's demeanor was kind of off. Um, so there was that. Um, so, and she said that like two or three times. And so then I guess she's like, I don't know what happened to the food, but the food never came out. We just continued drinking and like hanging out in the pool. And then she said she got really drunk. And then she, um, she also wanted to be clear that she wasn't wearing a, a swim suit. She was wearing pajamas. So um, by the time Tori came, she wasn't, she had decided to take a nap because she was that, she was drunk. Um, and so when she got back up, she um, saw Tori there and so she was passed out maybe about two to three hours so at this point it was Megan Tori EJ and Kelsey Megan Tori Kylie EJ and Kelsey um, and then Kelsey again says that Megan's demeanor was a little bit off um, so then EJ says let's go um, this is when she said she had her pajamas on not a bikini um, she said that Megan didn't want to go. She said that, you know, Tori looked like he didn't want to go. And he also said, she also said that Tori was being Tori, meaning that Tori, flirt, he was like really flirtatious with Kylie at the time. EJ said it's time to go. He said that um, to, for Kelsey to tell Megan that her wig is like, you know, not on properly and her appearance doesn't look good. Um, so eventually... Um, Kelsey said she doesn't know what happened, how the transaction happened, but um, EJ ended up putting their stuff, Kelsey and Megan's, into Tori's car. Um, but she doesn't know what happened with that. So eventually it was Megan, Kelsey, and their um, Tori's driver, and he was going to drive them back home. Halfway to her house, Megan said that she forgot her slipper and demanded to be taken back to the house. Kelsey was in the car with the driver, Jaquan, and um, a few moments later, Kelsey says she doesn't know what happened, but um, Megan comes out and says that Kylie, Megan comes out and says this specifically, bitch, Kylie said, we got to get the fuck out. Um, this is according to Kelsey. And then Tori was trailing behind. So um, at that time now, it is uh, the driver, Megan in the, the front seat, Kelsey behind her, and then Tori in the back seat behind the driver. Um, so then Kelsey was saying that there, there was an argument that was, uh, that was happening between initially Megan and Tori, and then Tori says, well, you, need, you should tell your friend or she's not really your friend, and then Kelsey finds out that Megan slept with Tori. Um, then Kelsey pretty much said that they're everybody, now all three of them were arguing. Everybody except for Jaquan was arguing back and forth. There were a lot of names being called. She didn't want to admit to the fact that Tori was calling her, or calling them, or not admit. The uh, prosecution asked her, was Tori calling them bitches and hoes? That's what the prosecution said. She didn't want to say yay or nay. She actually didn't really end up, she said, I guess so. She didn't really definitively answer the question. Um, so, like, the um, prosecution was really trying to get the, like, the words that were being said, that was said during the argument, and Kelsey saying, hey, I don't remember, you know, we are all yelling at each other. Um, and then this is when it gets kind of crazy. So then the prosecution says, did Tori threaten to shoot you? Then Kelsey looks at the judge and says, do I have to answer that? And the judge says, yes. Um, then the judge also says, you can speak to your lawyer. So Kelsey looks at her lawyer. The lawyer, I think, because I was right behind him, gave a slight nod or just a movement. 
and um, then the then she says I want to speak to my lawyer the lawyer approached the stand the lawyer then said we're going out into the hallway they go into the hallway about for four to five minutes and then they sit back down um, Kylie, uh, Kelsey excuse me takes the stand um, the then the prosecution asked her again um, did Tori threaten to shoot you and she said I am um, invoking my Fifth Amendment right then um, the judge said you can't do that and she says I don't really remember I don't recall and um, then the prosecution's like well what's changed because apparently Kelsey had an interview with the detective and the prosecution in September of this year and they have a statement from Kelsey saying that Tori she said Tori threatened to shoot her so um, something has transpired between September and now and uh, she I guess didn't remember and at this point uh, we are broke we broke for lunch so that's what's happening y'all it is getting kind of crazy um, like I said at the beginning, if you watch Law & Order SVU, this definitely feels like one of those episodes or Usual Suspects um, where, you know, there's double cost. I don't know about the law like that, but something smells really fishy. I don't think we're ever going to get the answers to exactly what happened, but the most important thing is what's going to happen at the end of this case. So we'll be reporting live throughout the trial, so keep it locked to so for all continuous updates. My name is TK Trinidad. I will see you all later on this afternoon, which I'm sure there's going to be more. All right. Ciao, y'all.